Well, hello everybody. Woof, let's shut this off for a minute. I want my cold water to get warm. So I removed this carpet back here that was covering up the skid mark. That looks worse than ever because, and the stain over there looks worse because it's wet. I hit it with carbon choke cleaner and I scrubbed it. And look at all the crap that came off the floor. So right now it's wet and that's why I got this running to dry it out in here a little bit. Might as well get rid of these before they catch on fire. And I got the other heater running in the other room. Which when I went back and listened to my video, you can't even hear that running in the background. It's weird. So, I'm gonna kill it just for my benefit. Yeah, to me, that's like on a volume 10. To you, it's like on a volume one. Ooh, that's a nice piece of metal, see that. So, um, have you seen in my previous videos, I got my cross up and I got it built. And then I went back to the Amish. And I said, hey, I want three more. Three more six by six by 16s. I said, cut them just like I did last time at five foot. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a beam saw. B-E-A-M. A beam saw is a regular, like a skill saw. But instead of having a seven and a quarter inch blade, this thing has a 16 and 5 sixteenths blade on it, which will get you down the cutting a full six inches. So I could raise it, adjust it, raise it up to cut at three inches, is what I need, lock it there, make my first per perfect passes. What I would do is I would lay three of them side by side, get them all nice, leveled up, squared up how I want it, on my car lift, and then use my ratchet straps to strap it on the car lift. I can make all three cuts at one time, you know? Use my, my square, make my cut three of them at once, and then come back and just keep cutting the centers like a half an inch apart, just keep scribing it. And then just knock them out with your hammer, a little bit of sand, and, and they're perfect. Same thing with the arms, you know, the, the cross pieces. You know, cut them all, line them up, cut them all at once. And, uh, and then, boom, three big honking crosses done at the same time. So what I did is I put them on, I got a picture of mine on there, and I put it on Craigslist for 250 a piece. And I said they weigh about 200 pounds. I said mine weighs 202 pounds. You know, what, what's the matter? A couple, you know what I mean? A couple pounds ain't really, you're not going to notice that picking it up. You're going to notice how heavy the damn thing is and indestructible. So we'll see. You know what I mean? If I get any bites, and I do. And if I don't, I give them his presents. You know, because technically they're only costing me $33 and a third cent to make them. And my time, which I don't count my time. My time is fun time. So that's why I don't really count my time or add my time in the stuff. Because for me, it's fun. So I'm not running a business. So this is starting to dry up nicely. So you can see some of the marks now. Are some of the water stains are disappearing now. Since it's getting dry in here. So I'm going to turn this back on. Let this go for a while. Get this room nice and warm. And uh, But this usually will quit. This will run for a while, then it'll quit and be stupid. So I don't know if I get a fuel filter. It's getting dirty in there or not, but I'll check it later. We'll let that run. See, it doesn't light right away. It takes a second. So I got to put these outside yet. Forgot about these. want to get them out in the sunlight. Well, there really ain't no sunlight left now, but I'll put them here. I'll absorb some of the natural light I suppose so while that's running and I don't want to hear it there I gotta listen to that now um supposed to be for the third stinking time the wire is going to be coming for this today and it's nine feet I'm like oh thank god it's nine feet because I want to come through uh, somewhere in this area I've got to come through with the thermostat wire 
which I don't need nine feet. So this is great. So the only thing is going to be is unplugging this because it plugs like right there at the end of it. So it's like, how the heck am I going to unplug that when it plugs right there? So I'm going to have to probably unclip the box and drop it down a little bit and blah, blah, blah. So whatever. That's, that's no big deal. So like I said in my last video, this is done. Now it's 100% officially done. And I've been, every time I come out, I roll the wheels. They're still hard. Oh, they feel identical. Good. Yeah, I just rolled around so that green crap, slime gets in there. So every tire I've got slime in it now, except the front tire and no front tires on these are slime. So now, of course, the last thing I got to do is wait for this. So what I'll do is when the seat comes in, I'll just throw a seat on it and probably put the seat post basically in this area. I don't know how high or low yet, so I can't do nothing there. But, and I'm not going to do nothing with brakes on this. I could actually, if I wanted to, I might be able to stack this on top of the sprocket, you know, and then put a brake on it. But, yeah, screw it. You got front brakes. You got some kind of brakes, so. I don't know. I don't think it's going to go that fast anyways. I'm probably guessing 25, maybe 30. I doubt it, but. So, yeah, not much going on today. Um, I just came out. Just to do a little straightening. I know I didn't have anything to do, so probably vacuum some of the there's my wrench. Vacuuming up. I was looking for that one. You go right in the quarter. You go in there somewhere. It's all right. So yeah. Yeah, there really isn't much to do out here. There's the carpet I removed right there out of the other room, the dark brown. So yeah, this is wide enough here so I can get six. Of those big planks on right here and then you know ratchet strap them together so they don't slide and move once I get them all squared up and then uh, yeah just make one pass with the saw so each one is exactly identical of course I got to dry sweep this off and blow it off but that'd be nice bring it up to my work height I ain't got to bend over none of that blow the dust off onto the floor and just blow right out the, the door so and we'll see what happens maybe some people you know i can put down i can make them in various sizes i can make a a one foot square i can make a monster one that weighs 300 pounds but it's going to be their problem to get it out of here so what i gotta do now is stupid me i took my trailer from out of the driveway off the side of the driveway and i put it behind the house so now we got snow. I don't think my zero turn will do too good in the snow because I don't have chains on it. So I got to get my trailer now from behind, inside the dog pen. And God, I don't know if the shorter way is to go through this door. I got the automatic gate on this side. I don't know. Anyways, I got to get it out of there and take it down to the Amish. And I'll probably just leave it there. If I can get it out here quickly, I'll just leave it down to the Amish and they can just stack the wood on it. I'll just put it off to the side and say, here it is. Stack the wood on it when you cut it. And I'll pick it up. So, yeah, that looks like it's crooked as hell, but it's sitting in a low spot. Eventually what's going to happen here is, okay, I poured about three foot here. And this is what's going to happen over time, not all at once, but I'm eventually gonna pour three more foot, take a week off, three more foot, maybe take another week or two off or a month, three more foot. This is eventually gonna be all concreted through here, a little bit at a time, just what I can handle. And uh, yeah, it's gonna end right where this ends. So it's gonna end right on this seam. So what I'll do is I'll nail a two by four on the back of this and come across to that one. So there's going to be quite a drop off right here, but whatever. So yeah, I want to finish concreting this here. So 
That's fun because I got to rake a lot of, you know, something actually that won't matter because all the rake, all the rocks I rake out of here will level this all up back here. So there won't be a drop off. Yeah, because I took out like two wheelbarrow fulls of stone over there when I poured that concrete. So I forgot how many bags I used. See, heater just shut off by itself. Piece of crap. Ooh, wow, it's hot in here. <sighs> wow. C6 code. Oh, C5 code. Yep. Low pressure. Woo. Holy crap. It's going to be 90 in here. Ugh. Ugh. Let's see if this works. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's just freaking hot. I mean, it's so hot back here, my eyes are almost burning. Look at that, the garage door that isn't supposed to work. You know what I forgot to do? I gotta get my feet wet now. I left that stupid valve open. And now mousies can climb in. Damn it. I was about to say, there's my camera tripod. Oh, that's my tamper. My tampoon. Oh, we got some snow here, damn it. Oh, shit. Frozen bitch. Okay. I was turning it the wrong way. What an idiot. Boy, I don't think that shotgun shell is going to go off. It's got moisture in it. Oof. Man, I want to concrete that too. Uh, now my feet are all snow. Damn it. Oof. These are my holy sneakers. That little snow ain't gonna hurt nothing. Little toe snow in this one because I got a hole blown out my sneaker. I don't know why these always do that. No matter how sh short you cut your toenails, it still does it. I don't know why. Because I got big feet. Anyways last time this is going to fall down. Every time I turn around, this thing's falling off something. Well, good. I'm glad I remembered that. We'll just put it back here now. I'll find it on the floor in the morning. Alright. Well, that's it. I'm just going to do a little organizing, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of this and that. A little bit of nothing. It's this thing. And, uh, that's about it. So this is my uh, Monday video, President's Day video. Woo, big deal. All right, have a good one. You can tell I'm not celebrating President's Day. Who's celebrating that jerk? Oh, my God, what's going on now is amazing. Now the truck drivers are getting involved, and they ain't going to New York City. <laughs> oh. And then I heard something else, which is a little bit kind of spooky, is, um, and, and please, feel free to check on this yourself. Um, yeah, don't just take my word for it. If I tell you something, look it up on your own, all right? So this way, you can see for yourself that I'm not just making stuff up, but I think I'm going to be parking these in there for now. Um... Oh, the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is coming. Um, there's a lady on there. I'll put the link. Let's see. I can't put the link in the description until a couple days from now. Monday. I think tomorrow I can start uploading videos. But the link in the description will explain how our solar eclipses are like a year apart or thereabouts, but for some strange reason, this one's eclipsing right across the United States in seven years. Now, seven years, according to the Bible, is when everything hits the fan. You know, the end of the whole nine yards and the world's all renewed and blah, 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 blah. That's just a quick shortness of it. But in the United States, the eclipse is coming. Where the hell is it coming from? Um, right from New York through Illinois and that way. So, and then the other eclipse crosses right on Illinois. 
And the way the eclipse is through casting a shadow on towns named in the Bible, it's like, oh, geez, you know, this isn't a, a typical eclipse. So this has, I don't know, I guess it has some kind of a meaning to it or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I say you check on it yourself. Because I always say stuff backwards, and sometimes it doesn't sound right, and then you go read it yourself, and then you say, oh, okay, I see what this idiot was trying to explain, you know. And then we go from there, but... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make a note and add that video in uh, down the bottom. You can watch it. And it's a lady interviewing the other lady that wrote, you know, this book. And... uh at first, I was just going to blow it off. It's like, okay, I'll sit here. Let me just sit here and listen to this crap. So let me see, you know. And the more they got talking, I'm like, wow. Okay, this is starting to make sense now. So, who knows? You be the judge, okay? Like I say in all my stuff, I put the link in, you be the judge. But we definitely are in end times. So, I can guarantee you that. So... What a great time to be alive, to see the end times coming, you know? And if we were reincarnated, I always said, you know, some of these people with these near-death experiences say, no, you actually plan your life out. When you're up in heaven, you know, with God, you go through your life planning event. You're going to pick who your parents are. You're going to pick what you're going to do. You're going to pick your accomplishments. You're going to do this, do this, do that. But you don't remember it because once you're sent down to become a baby again, you forget all that crap. Because if you ever think about it, our brains are freaking massive. And we're only using this much of it. You know what I mean? Why are our brains so damn big if we're hardly using any of it? Because once we die and go back up to heaven, all of the knowledge of the universe is put back into our head, downloaded back into us. Now, that may sound stupid, but it makes sense. Otherwise, our brain would be as big as your thumb, you know, to the capacity of what, what the average person knows now could probably be the knowledge put into a bubble gum, you know. So, yeah, and people said in the past, if we could have our full brain capacity, We'd be levitating and stuff. I mean, we'd be doing all kinds of wild stuff. So we don't see it here, but, you know, we'll figure it out. Once you die and get sent back where you came from, we'll know. All your answers are coming. So, you know, this isn't our life. We're just visiting this planet. That's all we're doing. This is just a learning trip. We're just learning stuff. For, you know what I mean? We're supposed to be learning how to be good to one another. And, and all this stuff. So that's what we're supposed to be down here learning. You know, learning sadness, pain, guilt, happiness. All the, all the feelings that you don't get in heaven because in heaven, everybody's happy. There's nothing going on. Everybody's just happy all the time. So if you ever want to experience, you know, the pain and all that crap, then you come to earth. And they say the earth is one of the hardest places to go through to learn. Because look at it. Look what's going on. So in that boy said, if I was to ever pick a time that I would want to be born, would be right at the explosion of the electronic age, all the way up to the end of the earth. So that kind of falls within my thinking category because that's just what I'm in. So I don't know. I, I think different than everybody else, but maybe you're thinking kind of maybe the same way. I don't know. But everybody has their own thing. And that's fine. That's what makes the world different, but, you know, we're, we're all related. I don't care what color you are, we're all related in one way or another. You know what I mean? They got to stop all this hate crap, you know, and it's kind of woke me up a lot. And, uh, you know, like I said, my dad was a huge racist. Some of that rubbed off on me, but now I, I'm waking up and said, you know something, you know, we're all the same. We're all the same people trying to make a living, trying to provide for our family, trying to get ahead, trying to, you know what I mean? Trying to do the right thing. Some people don't, you know, and some people do. So, you know, and I, I hope I didn't wake up too late and realize that 
you know, I was kind of a dickhead, but, you know, things happen. And sometimes it's like my drinking. Sometimes it takes something to wake you up or you're not going to change. Like when somebody tells you, yeah, you shouldn't smoke, it's bad for you. That's going to make you smoke just that much more. It's like, I ah, kiss my ass. I do what I want. But now when my, yeah, well, now the silicone's holding. Um, what woke me up with smoking was my wife in the hospital and seeing what she turned out, you know, the case she's got woke me up. Now, everybody else telling me to smoke. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. I'll smoke as much as I want. And when it hits that close to home is when it wakes you up. It's like when I was drinking. I was a huge alcoholic. My whole family was alcoholics. Until I saw a TV show on TV about alcoholic parents smacking their kids and this and that. And I'm like, it woke me up. It brought a tear to my eye. And I'm like, oh, my God, am I doing this to my family? He said, holy, I can't do this. So I quit. So, so yeah, um, doesn't matter what color you are, doesn't matter nothing. Everybody's going through the same crap. Everybody's having problems with the bills. Everybody's having problems with your car. Everybody, you know what I mean? We're all going through it. We should be helping each other out and becoming, you know, one against our big, bad government. You know what I mean? There, there shouldn't be any hate going on. All this hate is brought up by the damn government to keep everybody at each other's throat so they can just keep pocketing our money. We're not but a bunch of sheeps just giving money to the government, giving the money to the government, you know? And they're sitting back laughing while we're fighting against each other. Well, the black guy called me a cracker. So what? It's just a freaking word. You know what I mean? Or Chinese Ching Fu said this to me, you know? It's, it's like, it's a little word going to actually hurt you, you know? So anyways, that's where I'm at now. So I don't care, um, you know? So I say hi to everybody now. Doesn't matter. You know, we're all the same and we should stop going after one another for stupid garbage that the government made up that's got us... You know what I mean? Drilled into our head that we should hate this person and hate this person. Because you hate this person doesn't mean I have to hate him. You know, I've got my own opinion. Everybody's got their own opinion. So, we got to wake up. We got to wake up and uh, stop this crap and tell the government to suck it because, you know, they're the ones pulling all this crap. And we're falling to it, hook, line, and sinker. But that's my view. Yours may be different. And happy President's Day that I could care less at this President's Day. So, did anybody get a pair of $399 Trump shoes? I didn't. I didn't have them. I ain't spending money on stupid sneakers like that. He sold them out in an hour. A thousand pairs gone in an hour. And now the truckers are backing up Trump. So... New York City, nobody's coming in New York City now because of that Gilligan-looking uh, judge. You know, if you, if you want his address, I got it. So, yep. So, anyways, he lives down by Long Island. I'll put his address up on the screen. You can stop to say hi to him. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'll catch you later. Have a good one. I know it's Andy's opinion-filled video this time. Kind of went off rails a little bit there. But um, I heard that my neighbor down the street, my neighbor Gary, um, that helps me, that I worked on his gold wing, that guy. He goes, uh, Tractor Supply sells nuts and bolts by the pound. And I'm like, really? I said, oh, man, it's, I got to see how much a pound they get because I might be able to stock this whole thing up cheap. So, yeah, maybe tomorrow or something, I'll take a ride down the tractor supply and and see. And maybe, you know, like once a week or once a month, I'll fill one level up, you know, and then maybe the next level up, and I'll just fill up my... Well, before I go, emptied one out. I'm saving the other one for super massive big bolts. 
and just weird oddities and, and stuff like that. You know, like I'm not going to mix them in with regular bolts. But, yeah, so I'm... Let me zoom in and give you a little bit of light. So now I got some nuts and bolts started in here. Some holes are empty. What's that? Extension cord? Oh, fine extension cord. All right, put that over there. So, um... More bolts than I thought I had. I bet you if I go through my bolt drawer over there, I'd probably find enough to fill this thing. But yeah, I think I got rid of one. This is all screwed down now, so it won't go anywhere. And so this will hold hose clamps and you know this weird stuff that I'm not going to put in with the bolts. This is just bolts. That's it. So there, I feel a little better. I don't know if that's crooked or I'm crooked. Yeah, you get my level and put on that. Looks like I should go up more. All right, that's it. Catch you later.